This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, redundancy is not usually regarded as a good thing, but it is when you're talking about running a five kilometer electricity cable up the side of Mount Roy. The end could be nigh for a West Otago Heritage landmark building, which was threatened with the demolition last winter. And a performance by world-class string quartet has heralded the launch of a new charitable trust for aspiring musicians. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. Redundancy is not usually regarded as a good thing, but it is when you're talking about a five kilometre electricity cable running up the side of Mount Roy above Wanaka. The proposed cable has been put out to pasture in favour of new equipment installed at the top of the mountain. Getting a first hand look at $300,000 worth of new equipment on Mount Roy above Wanaka. Representatives from the organisations that raised or provided money towards the project getting to see exactly how it's been spent. So we've got the facility here for uh, housing radio equipment for the Upper Kalutha Basin. So it includes things like uh, radios for VHF radio, for the Department of Conservation, um, for um, civil defence. Uh, search and rescue. The new gear replaces an old cable which was used to power the radio communication repeater used by about 80 operators across the Upper Clutha. The idea was promulgated in um, the late 70s and so 1978 I think a group was formed to finally put a radio station in up here right. or the repeater station and so and that's where the power cable came up to here and so on and they put it in and it's been going ever since then. But it was frequently damaged by fire, earthquakes and lightning strikes. Brown says his organisation had been spending thirty to forty thousand dollars a year on maintenance. That's gone down to maybe a thousand dollars or less. The most obvious improvement is a bank of solar panels. That does enough now to power this and more um, and even during the winter months which is pretty good. Brown says he's been the association's chairman for the past six years and has treated the modernisation of the repeater station as his baby but he's now preparing to hand over to someone else in Wanaka the South today. After eight years, 141 days and a false start three weeks ago, a team finally stepped back inside the Pike River mine at 11.30am today. A team of three workers opened the doors to the mine, prompting cheers from families and supporters. Family members caught buses to the site for a private gathering, this time without the glare of television cameras at the mine site. The group secured the door as the cheers subsided. The three then disappeared into the entry to the shaft and began work on the 30 metre seal. The re-entry is intended mainly to recover potential evidence showing what caused the explosions. Chief Operating Officer Kevin Pattinson says the mine entry is looking just as it was left. Um, the walkway, the stainless steel walk, walkway and everything is all in good order. Um, the weirs, there's, um, I'd say there's actually no silt built up in the weirs or anything, it's all, all pretty clear. Um, and yeah, so we went up as far as the gabion baskets and everything like that, so, and we could actually shine our lights ahead and see the 170 metre wall and see the open doors and that. The families hope re-entry might eventually lead to court action to hold someone to account for the deaths. Once the re-entry starts in earnest, it will only cover 30 or 40 metres at a time. The drift is 2.3 kilometres long. Pike River Recovery Agency Chief Executive Dave Gorn said last evening that finished cutting through the concrete seal and providing a means to ventilate the drift. When a West Otago Heritage landmark was threatened with demolition last winter, it appeared the end might be in sight for the historic building. But community members took up their tools to save the century-old former Calso Dairy Factory at the 11th hour. In reasonable condition, considering it's 160 years old, the former Kelso Dairy Factory in West Otago was said to be demolished last winter, but community members have taken up the challenge to save it from destruction. Being an interested member of the Vintage Club and historian, um, you just can't let these things fall down. It's, it's sad to see them neglected, and uh, this way here, it'll be there for at least another 100 years. It was opened for business in 1913 by James Laidlaw Herbert. 
and two of his family members. He died in the First World War, but the factory operated for 32 years. But its fortunes ultimately mirrored those of the entire township of Kelso when the disastrous twin floods of 1978 and 1980 led to the town's permanent relocation. The deterioration of the building reached a point last August when site owners, the Clutha District Council, decided something needed to be done. Since all solid concrete and, and reinforced, it's not just concrete, it's reinforced as well. So it's there for a long time yet. Um, and that's why if we keep the water out of it, it'll last there for another hundred years. Tools, timber and some roofing iron have been rustled up and working bees organised, with the initial results exceeding expectations. Well, we're hoping to do it for under a couple of grand, which is pretty good. Which we've got to remember, you know, all labour, everything is voluntary. All the tools just seem to turn up. Future work will add some finishing touches, including batten doors and windows made by the Tapanui Bloke Shed in Kelso, the south today. Investigators are probing the cause of a fire at a Queenstown car dealership yesterday. The fire, which started in the workshop at Macaulay Motors in Grants Road, left a staff member with burns to his hands and prompted a large-scale response from Fire and Emergency New Zealand. More than 30 volunteer firefighters and five fire trucks responded after the fire threw up a huge plume of dark smoke. Investigators spent the afternoon examining the scene. The injured worker was discharged yesterday after treatment at Lakes District Hospital for moderate burns to his hands. The building opened only five months ago today. Macaulay Motors marketing manager Suzanne Van Pals says the company doesn't want to comment on the fire or the response as an investigation is underway. A performance by a world-class string quartet has heralded the launch of a new Queenstown charitable trust which aims to nurture young musicians. The Turn Up the Music Trust was officially launched in the resort on Saturday night. Striking a chord as the Turn Up the Music Trust is launched in Queenstown. This quintet, including expressive American cellist Alexander Hirsch, coming together just days before helping to launch the trust. The women who inspired Turn Up the Music are amazed at how it's come together. From, from one random conversation <laughs> yeah, on a Sunday really, afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, let's start a music school, that's a good idea. Yeah. And we really had no idea what we were letting our sons in for, and then it got harder and harder and harder, and teachers kept dropping out, and it was just, uh, the journey was fairly unpleasant at times. And a year on from the low point, we're here tonight. I know. It's, it's mind blowing. <laughs> Very humbling. The Trust will fund the Turn Up the Music School and create a stock of instruments which can be loaned to aspiring musicians. Wakatipu High School music teacher Alison Price says learning music helps brain development. I think music, the arts generally, actually had a delusion to, um, it's just part of the human condition, well I think it was, and too often it kind of gets sidelined, as I, as I said there, because it's not seen as being um, something that's easily measured. But there's a huge amount of anecdotal evidence and research that suggests that music and arts, but music particularly, I think has an impact on student learning. Amongst the classical repertoire, including Schubert and Mendelssohn, the quintet performed Mondo Rondo from New Zealand composer Gareth Farr, who attended the event. The Turn Up the Music School aims to create performance opportunities for youngsters and establish a grant fund for primary schools. In Queenstown, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today. A former World War II ammunition bunker near Alexandra gets converted into a house. episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put Some Colour in Your Life, Tuesdays, 7.30. At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent, and where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty, so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. The season has changed and at Alec Campbell Menswear in our three stores, Cromwell, South Dunedin and Mosgill, we have it covered. Check out these jackets, they'll keep you warm and dry and stylish. Of course we're known for our fashion shirts, but in the winter we do have our lovely warm shirts. Look at them all. And we're known for our great range of winter knitwear too. Don't forget our stretch moleskins, six colours. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits.
Yes. We'll keep you warm and dry and looking just great. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489 2274. Step into Shop on Carol and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. At Green Island Medical Centre, we are committed in caring for our future and present generations. We know as a young person, coming to the doctors can be quite daunting. Our highly skilled doctors and nurses will make your experience one where you will leave with a smile. Your house is very important to us. Every Kiwi deserves a reliable garage door. Rely on Garador to protect your important stuff. Just like Darren. His Garador keeps his favourite ride in mint condition. We have a huge range at affordable prices. Visit our website for a free consultation. We stand behind every door. Shall I make some scones? Welcome back. An alleged drunk driver was caught by police at a Dunedin bottle store after fleeing the scene of a crash last night. Police say the man crashed his car on the Cavisham Bypass motorway before fleeing the scene. He was spotted by a vigilant off-duty police officer who gave chase. The police dog team was alerted and shortly afterwards the man was caught at Super Liquor Anderson's Bay. The 40-year-old was taken to Dunedin Central Police Station where he was processed for excess breath alcohol. A former World War II ammunition bunker near Alexandra has been converted into a house. While in the building was never designed to be lived in, its conversion to a home is a result of one man's vision and drive as well as months of hard work. From World War II bunker to home, Mike Olson admiring the handiwork which transformed this flat-roofed 135 square metre building into a rental property, one of two bunkers he purchased just outside of Alexandra. When I first saw them, when I first saw them I thought, well, this is, this is trouble, steer clear, but um, you know, start thinking about um, what could be done and yeah, it, uh, it, it swept me along from there really. The work took 18 months, six more than he'd planned, and he says the final cost was a little north of his original $200,000 budget. The issue of, we had with the building to start with was obviously because the wall's 400 mil thick at the back, four, oh, 600 at the back, 400 at the, the front, um, having a lot of openings to let natural light in wasn't really an option. We limited ourselves to cutting some north facing holes to get the solar gain. The solid construction has ensured the bunker's survival over the years, but posed a challenge when planning alterations. The engineering aspects of it, of course, taking three columns out, cutting holes in these walls, um, there was a lot of steel work. I wanted to keep that out of the way, so we put most of the main structural elements um, above the roof. That's all insulated, new roof. He says the project wasn't as straightforward as he imagined and the second bunker could yet become someone else's heartache or joy. In Alexandra, the South Today. After the break on the South Today, we'll take a look at the annual Clutha Culture Feast held on Friday night and we check out tomorrow's weather.
with some colour in your life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put some colour in your life. Tuesdays, 7.30. At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent, and where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty, so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. The Green Island Medical Centre offers everything for your family's needs. Whether you are travelling or coming in to discuss health symptoms, our medical staff provide the best of care. We often manage my health, making booking an appointment or requesting a repeat prescription a breeze. We welcome families like yours. Give us a call today, phone 03 488 2754. Most of us have spots on our skin. That's quite normal. Finding skin cancer as early as possible is key to successful treatment. Book in for a free check of one to two moles or a comprehensive full body check with the Mole Doctor in Waverley. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489-2274. Autumn is here and it's too late to sow seed. But don't despair, Ready Lawn is the answer to all your garden woes. Call Ready Lawn today on 027 228 Step into Ross Cafe, located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. The season has changed and at Alec Campbell Menswear in our three stores, Cromwell, South Dunedin and Mosgirl, we have it covered. Check out these jackets, they'll keep you warm and dry and stylish. Of course we're known for our fashion shirts, but in the winter we do have our lovely warm shirts. Look at them all. And we're known for our great range of winter knitwear too. Don't forget our stretch moleskins, six colours. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. We'll keep you warm and dry and looking just great. Every Kiwi deserves a reliable garage door. Rely on Garador to protect your important stuff. Just like Darren. His Garador keeps his favourite ride in mint condition. We have a huge range at affordable prices. Visit our website for a free consultation. We stand behind every door. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. If you're suffering from sciatica, lower back pain, hips and pelvis and knees, this technique will work wonders for you. The energy flow is transmitting through the muscles. Come and see Sunny Chin. Ricky here from Beds R Us Dunedin, your local sleep specialists. Come in and try our huge touchscreen sleep selector, taking the hard work out of choosing the right bed for you. See you here. Welcome back. There was plenty to eat and more to see as around 750 people crowded into the Cross Recreation Centre on Friday night to take part in the annual Clutha Culture Feast. 
Eating Around the World in Balclutha. Organised by the Clutha District Settlement Support Group, the event drew in 14 stallholders who catered a wide variety of international and local food for participants to sample over a two-hour period. The group's chair, Diane Lowry, says the evening went well. We've got Thai, we've got Malaysian, we've got um, Czechoslovakian, we've got um, Zimbabwe, we've got French, we've got some Kiwi icons as well. We have got cheese rolls. While enjoying their multicultural meals, diners were entertained by children from the Rosebank and Clutha Valley Schools Kapahaka groups. Well, the main purpose is actually to, to bring this event to the community and for also members of our community to share and showcase what they, um, you know, what the flavours of their country of origin. Because I think it's really important for people to celebrate that. Lowry says the locals showed their generosity with door numbers up from last year. We charge a gold coin, that's all we ask, and that money does go towards um, our group for covering some of the costs of tonight. But the money that the stallholders make here is actually their money. The money raised will go to continuing support for the Clutha District Settlement Support Group, who provide a range of services for the multicultural workforce in the area. In Belclutha, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Redundancy isn't usually a good thing, but it is when you're talking about running five kilometres of electricity cable up the side of Mount Roy. When a West Otago Heritage landmark was threatened with demolition last winter, it appeared the end could have been nigh for the historic building. And a performance by a world-class string quartet has heralded the launch of a new Queenstown charitable trust, which aims to nurture young musicians. And time now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Hayden. Good evening, Sophie. How Good are you? Good evening. Good, thank you. Good to see you back. Thank you. Let's look at what's in the ODT. So our lead story tomorrow is about police in the South, uh, specifically about how much they're paid. Uh, far be it from me to say cops are paid too much. I don't think they are. They've got a heck of a job to do. But an interesting story nevertheless. We're looking at salaries across the range of uh, police officers in the South. I'm sure there'll be a lot of interest in that. A huge news out of Otago Rugby today, uh, and obviously usually the huge news out of a rugby union is winning a Ranfurly Shield or such things, but Otago Rugby's breaking some, some ground. They've um, appointed a chairwoman. Rowena Davenport becomes not only the first woman to chair the Otago Rugby Union, she becomes the first woman to chair a major union in New Zealand, and that's, I think, genuine cause for celebration. It's great to see Otago, as it has done so often, leading the way, and I'm sure everybody wishes Rowena the best of luck. It can be a mm. tricky job leading a rugby union, but she'll do great. Uh, some news from Pike River, obviously the, the mine reopening today, a, a huge day for the families especially, so we'll have some coverage out of the west coast of that, a fairly momentous day. The Otago Harbour Master's new boat has been christened and launched. Uh, no, it's not Boaty McBoatface, uh, obviously that was most people's pick for the boat. It's got, a, it's got a lovely name, which people can read about in tomorrow's ODT. And finally, some news of another big concert coming to Dunedin. Mm -hmm. I think the news might be sort of embargoed till tomorrow morning, so I better not harm any lyrics or indeed ask you to sing any lyrics. Can you Sophie. give us a hint? No, I don't think I can. Look, it'll be a barnstormer. It's going to be a big one. Uh, read tomorrow's ODT. Yeah, we find can out. look out for it in the morning. Who else is coming? Dunedin, Concert City. Here we go. Radio. Well, thank you, Hayden. All of that and more in tomorrow's ODT and our big concert announcement. And time now for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by MolMap. Starting with today's southern view, construction time again on the site of the new Dunedin Hospital. Looking at the situation, a westerly airflow continues over southern New Zealand tomorrow and through the end of the week, with a few showers on the south coast, but mostly fine weather elsewhere. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport can expect rain and 14 degree highs. Across to the northeast, Nelson and Blenheim are due to have a cloudy day and a high of 17. In Canterbury, plan for a mostly cloudy day with 16 in Kaikoura and 17 in Christchurch and Ashburton. Moving to the southern towns, 
Moderate southwesterlies and some cloud across the region, with 11 degree highs for the Catlins and Lumsden, while it's slightly warmer in Balclutha and Gore with 12 degrees. Heading westwards to the central lakes, plan for light southwesterlies and some cloud. Wanaka and Alexandra can expect 12 degrees, while Queenstown and Tiano can expect a high of 11. Up to the northern towns, Timaru and Oamaru are due for light winds and some high cloud with 14 degrees. Similar in Twizel and Amarama with both reaching 13 degree highs. Moving to Dunedin, cloudy tonight with light northerly winds and an overnight low of 6 degrees. Cloud breaking tomorrow morning and sunny periods increasing during the day with light northerly winds dying out. Milder temperatures looking at a high of 15 and a low of 6. Sunny periods and scattered cloud on Thursday with light southwesterlies looking at a 12 degree high and a low of just 2. Heading to Invercargill, a few showers tonight with cold southwesterlies freshening with an overnight low of 8. Showers clearing tomorrow and sunny periods increasing during the afternoon with fresh gusty cool southwesterlies easing. Cold tomorrow night, you're looking at a high of 12 and a low of 3 degrees. Sunny periods and some cloud on Thursday, moderate westerlies and a high of 14 degrees ahead of an overnight low of 6. That's all for our news this Tuesday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz and follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.